everybody, Tyrone the Guy 3 here, and welcome back to my Dragon Ball Super Reviews. Today we'll be doing the review of the episode 24, Clash, Frieza vs. Goku. This is the results of my training. And this episode, uh, I really hate to say that. Uh, a lot of people, have, uh, I think, have viewed me as the negative Nancy of Dragon Ball Super, and I don't want to be. but Because, and the reason of such, though, that I feel like that is because... I, I truly love the Dragon Ball series. I've watched a lot of anime. I'm not just the typical, oh, I've only watched the shonen populars like One Piece, Bleach, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, you know, the standard ones. I've watched others. I'm recent, or I'm currently watching Parasite as well as, uh, one Punch Man, which is follows one of the popular ones, I guess. And I've watched several others. I've watched another. I've watched School Rumble, Madaka Box, you know, several Air Gear, uh, Ice Shield 21, you know, several different animes that haven't had as much of a staple in the anime community and some rare ones here and there. So even after all of those different types of anime I've watched, I still love Dragon Ball. It's not even just the fact that I grew up with Dragon Ball. It's the fact that the Dragon Ball series has always had a use of character development as well as fighting and story that I really have come to love. So it pains me to see something like this happen, although the episode itself isn't bad. It just... It's a little disappointing if you've already watched Resurrection F. Now, granted, there are some small little tidbits in this episode that I actually thought were kind of good, but they're so small that they're barely mentionable. But I guess I should start off with the plot summary and go through it. The plot summary isn't really that long, so we'll get through it. The episode is basically Goku and Frieza's fight. Now, when Goku and Frieza begin their fight, they begin it similarly to how Vegeta and Frieza actually began their fight, was when they clenched hands together and powered up to the very max to outweigh each other in strength. This obviously results in a draw, and the two have to back up because it exposed the entire area. After that, Frieza walks up to Goku in a similar fashion to how he did during the original saga, where they were about to fight, and Goku was at normal saying the first time. I will give this episode credit credit however by making it look like Frieza at his final form is stronger or to the very least has more of a sadistic nature than he did when he fought Goku in Resurrection F. Like I said a lot of these will be shown off in my comparison video of the saga versus the movie but in this one fight the two are more or less evenly matched. However, Frieza has a slight edge, but not because of pure power. It's because Frieza does a distraction method. What Frieza ends up doing is launching energy blasts towards Krillin, Gohan, and Boma. Goku, of course, blocks the shots, but because of this, he's distracted from the fight, which leaves Frieza wide open to get in some pop shots. I actually respect this because Frieza is a dirty fighter, but at the same time, I'm kind of jarry about Frieza being that underhanded, at least now. Frieza was always the type of person to be so proud of his power that if he's going to kill you, he's going to kill you for later. Or to the very least, he's going to kill you when it's less predictable. And this one, it's so predictable because it's obvious. Frieza launches an energy blast and it flies straight towards Gohan and Krillin. It doesn't even make an attempt to like be sneaky with it where in the midst of battle Frieza launches a death beam straight at, at the others this is a very predictable energy ball more or less they end up fighting uh, some more and Vegeta gets a little irritated during this point when Vegeta gets irritated he's irritated more or less at the fact that during the fight they keep BSing around and honestly I really relate to Vegeta here I mean, yeah, it is BS. Not only are they not both fighting at full power, they're also talking a little too much in the fight. Now, granted, some of the dialogue is positively necessary. It shows off how much Frieza despises Goku, and in this saga versus the movie, I can see that Frieza's hate towards Goku is very genuine and justifiable. But then again, Frieza's always had a hate for Goku. This isn't anything exactly new. It's just explained a lot more. I guess because they have time to explain it more. Because it's not a movie. It's a saga. However, this pisses Vegeta off to the point where he even goes in and tries to attack Goku. Now, this is where I got a little disappointed. This fight lasts about as long as it did in the movie, where Vegeta and Goku 
kind of thought. I wanted this to actually just be an episode of its own, like Vegeta rages, Goku ver- uh, yeah, like rage ensues, Goku versus Vegeta or something. Like this could have been a thing in between all of that, and then Frieza could just break it up towards the end of the episode, or to the very least, the middle of the episode where Goku and Frieza get back to their fight. I wouldn't have mind that happening because it would have shown some development towards Goku and Vegeta, or to the very least showed more development towards Vegeta and making it so that Goku and Vegeta's fight could have lasted a bit longer. I don't know about you, but I'm very interested in the action that's happening. However, this saga hasn't really delivered much action per se Uh, the fights look kind of low budget to me and that's what gets to my next issue about this episode the animation while it's not as bad as episode 5 this episode still shows to have some very jarring animations at some times it looks fine but at other times it looks like it's going to be episode 5 all over again obviously they may fix this in the blu-ray just like they did with episode 5 but it's still jarring to know that this is still an issue You would think that Toei Animation would learn from their mistakes from Episode 5 of Dragon Ball Super and try not to repeat this. This is a mistake that almost ended the entire series altogether. So fix that shit. Anyway, once the fight continues, we go on to Goku and Frieza continuing their fight. And I don't know about you, but I'm a little disappointed with the way some of the energy attacks have been treated lately. While in Beerus and Goku's fight, at least when Goku was at Super Saiyan God, there was some energy attacks that did look pretty cool. It kind of bothered me that Kamehameha was still in the form of a ball instead of a beam, but regardless... The thing I'm talking about is the energy volleys, the attacks that Z-Warriors or villains would use in order to launch multiple types of smaller energy key blasts. This animation looks very jarring when you look at it because Frieza and Goku both, both literally do the exact same arm movements and it feels stiff. Their arms are in like a box-like formation and they, it kind of looks like a GIF, a lazy GIF file of characters moving their open palms back and forth. It doesn't feel genuine. In Dragon Ball Z, when characters launch energy blasts, you could see fluid movement within their arms. Want a prime? example, check out the episode where Vegeta ends up launching a full-out assault on Raccoon and then finishing that assault with a volley of energy blast towards him. Yeah, the attack fails, but it looks cool as all hell because Vegeta put a lot of effort into those energy blasts. I don't get that sense here. It feels like they're so animatronic, and I hate to say that. I guess we can move up towards the towards the next part of this, which is the Vegeta part again. Vegeta congratulates Freeze on his revival. He's doing this sarcastically due to spite that Freeze almost shot Boma uh, during their last hit. Vegeta thankfully was able to, you know, combat the energy blast by blocking it. However, it does show that he hates Freeze now more than ever. They even had him doubting whether or not Vegeta was on the good side or not because Frieza had been revived. TN even states that he has some doubt that Vegeta is on the good side and he may have switched just because he knows that Frieza may be the stronger force. Anyway, what's that? small hint of doubt is over we continue the fight but we drown down to the part where they finally decide to move in the storm scene which is awkward as all hell now Uh, the storm decides to finally roll in and now Goku and Frieza have decided to fight seriously like Vegeta wanted so with this said Goku decides to go ahead and transform into Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan Blue makes its first debut appearance I gotta say this is okay I say okay because remember in the episode where Goku transformed Super Saiyan God in Dragon Ball Super, it was this big glorified transformation that almost took up the entire episode, and it was really nice looking. In this one, it feels kind of lowbrow, like... It's one of the shortest transformations I've ever seen happen in Dragon Ball Z history, to be perfectly honest. I'm not talking about straight up just transforming. I'm talking about the fact that this is a new form introduced to the series. And for an entirely new form introduced to the series, this looks pretty underwhelming. Normally, new transformations when obtained look a bit cooler. Yeah, it's over the top, but this is Dragon Ball Z. We kind of expect that. But so it kind of pained me. However, it wasn't all bad because the way it looked was significantly cool. I mean, it's almost cooler than it was in the movie. In the movie, it had to be short because it was a movie. But in the series, 
they could have taken as long as they really needed to. Goku just powering up could have been enough for me, and then they could have to be continued that crap on the next episode. This is a new Super Saiyan transformation. Treat it as such. However, like I said, the way he turned into it was kind of cool. Also, the episode gives more time to explain about this transformation, and it is confirmed that Super Saiyan Blue is officially stronger than Super Saiyan God, the red form. Or at least what, uh, what Master Roshi and King Kai state. After Goku transforms Super Saiyan Blue, Frieza is a bit impressed, but also he is jumping at the chance to transform himself. He doesn't, however. We move on to the next episode. I gotta say, like I said, this episode had some goods and bads, and a lot of them sort of were bads for me. I hate to say it, but the movie did Frieza and Goku's fight better in terms of fluidity. There was a lot of dialogue and character development that this episode had, but not so much to the point where it could change the course of the entire story. There's nothing here that the movie didn't do that this, that Super can do better. I'm sorry. However, the next episode we run into will be an all-out battle. The vengeful Golden Frieza. I'll see you all then, everybody. Tyrone the Guy 3, out.